All right, class. Um, in this video, we're going to add a timer. So you're going to calculate how much time we have spent in the game. Um, so first, let's go to assets, go to the script. Uh, let's import um, the timer script I provided. So here's the script. Um, we're going to use the UI. So we have to say, you know, we're going to use the Unity Engine UI. And uh, here we declare uh, four integers. So basically, we need to calculate the time, right? The numbers. Um, so first is, let me show you. So first is the minute, uh, one's digit, minutes, tens digit, and uh, seconds, one's digit, and uh, the seconds, tens digit. Okay, so these four are gonna be the numbers. So why we separate these numbers? Because you know, once you have a 10 seconds, you're going to uh, move on to here, right? So 10 seconds, you're going to have a uh, 110. And when the tens digit comes to 6, you're going to add 1 minute. So we have to separate this, uh, uh, these numbers. Uh, and here we add a string. So basically, for string, uh, you're going to calculate the time in the background in the game. So for the millisecond, we're going to have a string. So the uh, millisecond, you're going to uh, equal to the time, uh, the game time. Okay, so we have to do the string. Okay, uh, and then here we have a four, uh, five game object. So the game objects are present are the text. So what we are seeing here are the text. So the text is going to be the game object. The integers are the numbers that is calculated in the background. Uh, and in order to print it out on the screen, we have to use the game object, the text. Okay, uh, so that's it. So um, in the beginning, basically we want the tens digit of minutes and the seconds both set as a, as a zero because while we are calculating, you know, the ones digit, we want the tens digit to be zero. Okay, that's it. Uh, and then uh, uh, when the game is updated, the millisecond between the calculated millisecond is going to equal to the game time. So game time is the data time. Um, is You can understand like a, a, a frames, okay? And here we have to time it by 10. So that will be uh, transfer the, um, uh, the game time to the millisecond time, okay? Um, and uh, we have to um, change the format to display. So basically the game time is not displayed uh, correctly in the numbers. So we have to transform the format. Um, you know, here the format um, F0 basically is going to display is like a, a, a digits like this. Okay. So you don't have to, um, you know, fully understand the whole thing. Uh, but here just to give you a concept that basically this is a display mode F0 basically display like this zero, uh, digits with a, with a, with a points. Okay, uh, and then we want the text of a millisecond, you know, uh, sorry, we, we want to access the text of this millisecond, which is, let me show you this one, millisecond, we want to access is the text and then print what we get, you know, from the delta time, right? We transfer the format and then we want to print it here at the text box. So this is a millisecond text. We want to access the text box and then print the time we calculate in the background and then we transform uh, the format and then print it here. Okay, so basically that's what this does. Okay, so this is the hardest part basically in the whole script and here down below is very easy. So let me um, scroll it down. So whenever the milliseconds becomes 10, you're going to reset the millisecond to zero and you're going to add the second, okay, one digit here, one digit of second to, you know, you're going to add one, all right? And once the second one digit becomes 10, you're going to reset it back to zero and you're going to add uh, the tens digit to one, okay? You're going to add one to tens digit. And once the tens digit reaches a six, you're gonna reset the tens digit of seconds into zero, and then you're gonna add 
the minus one digit. Okay, you're gonna add a minus one digit. Uh, add one here, and once the minus one digit reaches the ten, you're gonna reset the minus one digit to zero, and you're gonna add one to the minus ten digit. Okay, so etc. etc. However, here because we um once the minus ten digit reaches the six. You know we can do. You know, uh, you have to add hours, dig uh, once digit to one. But I don't think, you know, uh, anyone gonna play the game for hours. So we just reset the minus ten digit back to zero. Okay, so we're gonna reset, uh, the the time. Okay, so at the end, we want to see that for the text seconds once digit tens digit and minutes once digit tens digit, uh, you're going to you know access the text box. And print the count second one digit ten digit minutes one digit ten digit that we calculate in the background. So here basically is the text on the screen, and here is what we have calculated in the background in the game engine. So we have to print it out on the text. So that basically this is what it means. So we want to print, we want to access the text and print out the the number we calculate in the background. Okay. So first, we have to,、uh, as you can see, this is the.、Uh, let me get the template. Yes. So first, we have to import、uh, this time timer box. Basically, this is a texture、um, that I created in Photoshop. Okay.、Uh, and then we're gonna create all of these、uh, text. Put it on top. Okay. Put it on top of the time board. All right, now let's go to game object, go to UI, and、uh, let's create a raw image. So raw image allows you to、um, import a texture. See, it has a、uh, texture section, so it allows allows us to drop in the time board texture. Okay, so here let's rename it to timer board or anything you want to remember.、Um, you know, it's easier to remember. Uh, and go to the assets folder and、uh, textures folder, and then go to the files I provided and go to the texture folder. Okay, the file I provided, textures folder, and you will find the time board. So just drop in this texture into the scene,、uh, and then select the time board raw image, and then for the texture section, you just drop in the texture we just imported. Okay, so here we will like. The timer to be the right top corner. Um,、uh, we can simply just move it to the right top corner, and then here's one thing I need to highlight. Okay, so which is the anchor point? So now you can see we have placed the anchor. Uh, we have placed the time board at the top right of the screen, right? And、uh, by default, any UI elements you have created, like the text, the text. Or the raw image, the texture, or the buttons. Later on, we're gonna import buttons. So by default, it's anchor point instead of the center. What does this mean? So that means the its position is is location relative to the center of the canvas. So right now, for example, the position X is two hundred seventy five, right? So that means its position、uh, its position is um. Two hundred seventy-five pixels away from the center. See that? So if I select here, its Y position is one hundred twenty-seven pixels away from the center point. Okay. So the as the anchor point is the center of the world. If I change my screen size, see? If I change my screen size, its relative position is still you know the Y is one hundred twenty-seven. The X is two hundred and seventy-five pixels. So now it has been cut out. See, the white line here is the border of our screen. Why this is important? Because later on, when you export your game, you're gonna play it on different devices, right? And different uh 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 devices has different screen size. So if I uh preview this game on my laptop, it may looks like um.、Uh, You know the 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 time board may be on the right top corner, but if I play it in a lab's computer because the screen size is, is different, and then the time board will flow to a different location, which is weird. So how can we let it always stay at the right top corner 
of our game interface. Uh, easy. All you have to do is okay. Let me move it a little bit. Okay, so all we need to do is change its anchor point. So instead of allow its anchor point to be the center of the world, you just change the anchor point to the top right corner. So now you can see that immediately the um, position info have changed because see now its position is anchor point is the right top corner. So its x position is minus. 62 pixels away from the border. Uh, y is uh, minus 59 pixels from the top. So now if I change the screen size, see, it always keep um, minus 62 pixels away from the this edge, right? And then minus 59 pixels from the top edge. So it will always stay at the, at the right top corner. So this is important. Okay, so we have to remember. So if you want anything to be uh, at a corner, either the top right or bottom right or the left corner, just to make sure you set the anchor point to, you know, if you want it to be left the top corner, so just set it to left the top corner. All right, go to game object, go to uh, UI, legacy, and create text. So we will, we will have the, the numbers for the time. Okay, so uh, let's rename it to um, text muni okay so this is going to be muni seconds um as the same we want it to be um at the right top corner so we have to change this anchor point to the top right so it's going to stay as at the same position as the uh, the time board texture no matter what screen size is okay so let's move it to here and uh, let's change the text box size um First, let's put a zero here. So now we know where our text is. Uh, yeah, it's there. Uh, and then uh, change the text color to white. Okay. Um, and then let's center it, center the text, center X and Y. And then let's use this tool. Okay, click on this tool. So we can uh, freely adjust our text. So now we know where is it? Oh, 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 sorry. So now we know where is it. And then we can just use the move tool to move it to the right location. Um, I think the text is a little bit too small. Let's try 16, 17. Yeah, 17 works better. And uh, let's make uh, the text book a little bit bigger. So we know the text will not be cut off if it becomes uh, 9 or 8, you know. Um, recenter it again. Okay, so this is a text a millisecond. So now, um, as we have set up everything like the font size, font color, and the uh, anchor point, we can simply just hit Command D to make a duplication when we make the other numbers. So this one we're gonna see text, um, second, um, once digit. Okay, um, and then we're gonna hit Command D again and make the tens digit. Yeah, here. And then tens digit. So you know what I will do next step. So we're gonna, gonna copy them and make the the uh, the minus right minus digit. So I'm gonna duplicate both of them and oh uh, and move them down. Yeah. So here, so like both of them and move them here. So this should be the, yes, the minus digit, let's see, min digit. And this is supposed to be the min, mini tens digit. So I rename it to a minus tens digit. Okay, so here we go. So we have the text, text here. All right, so now let's, um, what else? Okay, so now let's create uh, another game object. Let's create a, maybe let's just create an empty object. So this one we're gonna say text um, script. Okay, so you're gonna be a script holder. Okay, text script holder. So, we, so we're gonna put a, a script on this uh, empty object. And uh, let's drop this uh, text uh, script holder into the canvas. So they'll stay together with the text, right? Okay, so it all make everything 
pretty much organized. Um, and where's the script? Yeah, we have to import. So go to SS, go to script. Uh, here we already import a script earlier, so we can simply just apply it onto the script holder. So just click and hold and drag it, drop it onto the text script holder. And now you can see that we have these uh, variables we um, declared um, in, uh, 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 in, in, in Dreamweaver on the script. Okay, so we simply just need to plug them in. So first is the text millisecond, it's gonna be here. Text second, one's digit, tens digit, and um, minutes, one's digit, and minutes, tens digit. Here we go, simple, easy, right? So now, uh, he command S to save your game and you can test the play the game and see if, uh, if it works. Okay, time to start the count. Uh, perfect. Change the screen size. Yeah, the text stays there. Good. All right. I think it works perfectly. The only thing I, I'm not satisfied with is I think it's a little bit too um, no. Maybe I have to just put it around this location. So we can we can select all of these, the text holder and time board and text. Just move them up a little bit. Yeah, that will fix that issue. So next is, uh, remember that uh, when we import the countdown time, the script holder for the nap timer, right? In the previous class, the time nap timer, we uh, added a, a timer template, uh, a temporary uh, object, you know, just to make sure the script is working. Basically, what happened is if if I open the countdown script, you 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 will see. So let me open it. So basically, when you uh when you are uh have the countdown time, we want to here, yeah, we want to set a nap timer as a false, so we don't want the nap time to start to count the time. And once the count time is over, see here. Okay, so once the counting down time is over, three, two, one, and then the nap time set active gonna be two, so you're gonna start to count the time, right? So right now, if I start to play the game, um, as the race is not started, my car uh, is not driving, uh, the time is already start to counting, see that? Okay, so this is not true, right? So we have to disable it in the beginning. So what we can do, basically, uh, we just have to disable the, the text script, right? So if the script is disabled, the number will not change, it will keep at zero. And once the script is enabled, now the timer is going to start to work. Okay, so let's to see if you just select your countdown script holder, you know, where it has the car, car countdown time, and just replace the nap, nap, nap time with uh, this object. So the text script holder, just plug it in here. Okay, so now say if I start to play, you will see the in the beginning, the text script holder is gonna be disabled. Right, this object has been disabled and time is not counting. Once the countdown time is over, it's enabled and time is start to count. Okay, so very easy, right? Okay, so now next step, we're going to add a um, finish line, uh, finish line, I, I think a finish line script to disable the, the time. Once you enter the finish line, so you're gonna disable the timer and it's gonna show you uh, how much time uh, it takes for you to reach the final destination. Okay, and uh, also, once we enter the finish line, we want to disable our vehicle, so we will not be able to control our vehicle at all. Um, and also, we want to disable the vehicle's camera. And instead, we're going to um, create a finish line camera. So basically, once the car pa passes the finish line, we want our point of view to be here. We want our camera, you know, the game to render from here, and it shows our players' cars driven by and stop there, okay? And and also we're going to add some fireworks and some kind of a chair papers, okay? So now let's, um, let's select the finish point banner, okay? So our view is 
fork sound here and then go to game object and create an empty object and here let's rename it to finish line uh, script holder okay oh actually you want um, I think, uh, sorry, I made a mistake. So actually, we're going to just create a trigger to hold the script. It could be easier. So go to game object, go to uh, 3D object, a cube. So this allows us to create a cube. So we're going to use this cube to be a trigger. So here, let's rename it to finish line trigger. Um, so like this, uh, this uh, uh, a trigger, this cube, and let's um extend it and make it taller yeah just make sure you are able to cover this whole area uh and orange it okay and uh, let's uh check on each trigger so this is gonna be the trigger okay and then uh we're going to add a script to it so here let's go back to the folder that i've provided uh, go to the script folder and you should find uh, the finish line uh, camera switch. Okay, so let's just drop in the script. All right, now let's select the finish line trigger. Let's add the finish line script to it. Okay, so here we go. So uh, let's turn off the mesh render of the finish line trigger so we're able to see through it. And uh, let me open the finish line script and uh, explain the concept. So basically, okay, so here uh, we're going to create a finish text. So once you pass the uh, finish line, you're going to on the screen, you're going to print finish. Okay, and we're going to also have a finish audio. So once you pa pa pass it, uh, you're going to have a celebration uh, audio, uh, music. And we're going to uh, declare the cam uh, the car's camera group because later on we're going to disable it. And the finish line camera, we're going to add a finish line camera. So uh, once you pass this line, the game will be rendered from this camera. So you will not be able to see it through your car. Okay. And then we are we will uh, call the car and AI car to stop working. And uh, you're going to also uh, come up with a menu page which has like a main menu or quit the game like those and also we, we're gonna call the nap timer so basically we we create this game objects so in the beginning so once you start the game the finish text you know when when the when when you start the game the finish text is gonna be false so you do not showing up okay you are only show, showing up once the, this function happening Okay, and also in the beginning, the menu page is disabled. It will not show up. You know, it will not show like the main menu button, the quit the game button. Okay, the finish line camera also is disabled. Uh, once the trigger uh, is being activated, once, once you have an object to enter the trigger and that object is tagged as a player, you know who he is. So basically that's our car, right? The car been tagged as player okay so once this object entered the trigger um we will disable a car so basically gonna get uh, access the car get his component which is the car controller script and car user script right the car controller script and car user script and you're gonna disable them you're gonna also access the ai car and uh, disable their script so once you have had passed the finish line you will not be able to control your car at all and the AI, AI car will stop working. Okay, and you're going to uh, disable the car's camera group. So you, we will not be able to see from the car's point of view anymore. And you're going to show, you're going to activate the finish, finish line camera's view. So now the game is going to be rendered from the finish line camera. Okay, you're going to also start to play the finish audio and display the finish text. You're going to dis, uh, disable our timer so now the timer uh the timer will stop working you don't know start to count uh count the time and also you're gonna start this coroutine so what this coroutine is basically once you pass the finish line you're gonna first you're gonna wait for two minutes uh two seconds before it uh turn on the manual like 
quit the game or main main menu. So once you enter the finish line, you want to show, uh, you know, all the fireworks, the celebration stuff, uh, for any stuff few seconds right before it is showing up the buttons. Okay, so basically that's the script. Very straightforward, right? So when you enter the trigger, doing this, and also wait two seconds, and then showing up the manual button. Okay, so now we just have to create those stuff one by one. So first, let's create the finish line camera. So once your car passes this finish line, how your game will be looks like. So we're going to select our um, finish line banner. Let me find where is it. Oh, here. Okay, so let's go to game object. Go to camera. Let's uh create this camera and say finish line cam. Okay, so let's bring it here backward a little bit and rotate that way so we can see um our car pass through it. All right, that's it. So this is the finish line camera. Let's go to uh, the folder I provided, the file I provided, and bring in the finish level 01 sound. So let's hear it. What are you about? Okay, so once your car passed the finish line, you're gonna play this music. All right, so let's um, drop this uh, finish level music onto this object. Okay, so you're gonna create it. And we don't want it to play on a week, so let's check it off. Okay, we want the script to trigger it on. Uh, what else? Let me double check the script. So we have, we have the finish on camera, finish audio, finish text. Oh, finish text. Okay, so now go to game object, UI, uh, Lexi and text. Let's uh, say this is a tag, uh, uh, finish. Finish text and select it. Press F key, uh, so we can go back to our um, um, um manual. This interface, um, and uh, let's bring it up to the center, and I think we have to increase the size of the canvas by clicking here. Increase size of the text box, uh, so it will. It allows us to write the text finish. Okay, uh, finish. And because we, we will make it very big, for example, 150, uh, maybe too big, uh, try 80. Yeah, 80 is better. So now the finish, say finish the text is in the center, right? Uh, and then let's change the color. Let's make it the red color, okay? And then let's center it. How to center it? Remember, now because the anchor point is the center, right? So that means if we put the position X and Y both to zero, so it'll be perfectly in the center. And all we have to do is just center the text in the text box. Okay, that's it. That's the finished text. Um, <laughs> And because we're gonna also uh, have access to the manual page, right? So once you enter the finish line after two seconds, you're gonna display the manual. And we haven't, we have yet created the, the manual uh, and will not create it in this video because it's gonna be too long. Okay, so I, we're gonna just create a temporary object. So create an empty and a, a temporary manual. Okay, I'm gonna just say this. You're gonna, oh, you're gonna just be a holder for the script, you know, to function because we have to apply the a, a object, right? So now go to finish line cam, finish text, and uh, finish banner. Okay, so we have to create a object, a finish line trigger. Yes, I already created. Okay, so we have to um, have this object to hold the script, and then we have to plug in all the stuff. Uh, we just created first is a finished text, then is a finished audio, so they're gonna be finished music, and then the ca car's camera group. So we find the car, 
find our car and drop the camera group, which is the camera holder. It ha it has all of the cameras for our car, right? So we're gonna drop in this folder. Oops, now we have to drop it in this folder. So you're gonna disable it. Yeah, here. And then finish line camera. So we're gonna switch to finish line camera, right? Uh, and then our cars group, which is this cars group and AI car group, because after we pass this line, you're gonna disable these two. And the manual page, yes, manual page, we're gonna just use this temporary object. And then nap timer, because you're gonna, once we pass here, you're gonna disable our timer. So we're going to just drop in the text script holder here. All right, so now let's see if I, oh, uh, let me save the game. And also let me just bring in our car closer to the finish line so we don't have to wait the time to drive the whole nap. Okay, so I'm gonna select my car and let me just bring it right in front of my finish line. Um, let me rotate it by 180 degrees so it's facing the finish line. All right, so now let me test. So as you start the game, you're gonna start count the time and the timer is being disabled. Okay, once the time is over, it's gonna work. Okay, and once I pass the finish line, once I pass, oh, uh, why it doesn't work? Okay, so let me double check. So this is the finish line trigger, yes. Uh, check the ease trigger. Ease trigger. Car. Okay, I see. So, um, in the car folder, right, we have the colliders. So, uh, we will have to tag all of this to player. Okay, the colliders. All of the uh, child object of the collider all to a player. So now let me try it again. Yeah, this works. See? And also, as you can see, once we enter the finish line, the timer stopped working and the camera switched to here. Okay. So, um, so this is a finish line camera. So now let's add some celebration. Let's add some fireworks. Okay. It's going to be fun. Um, so let's go to SS, go to, um, go to script. And let's go to the script that I provided. We're going to bring in the finish line firework v1 version one. Okay, first. I'll explain why I have two versions. Um so let's bring in the first one. Alright, now let's um select the finish line trigger, press F key to focus our view on it. Uh let's drop in the um script we just imported, so make sure you are apply the correct script, which is the finish line firework v1. Let's drop it onto finish line trigger. Um, and uh, here are the object we are declaring. So basically, chair paper from one to four, and the fireworks and uh, the audios. So let me show you what they are. So here are the chair paper videos. So basically, the are the chair paper. So we're going to um put it on the screen once our car passes the finish line. And here's the firework, right? Um, and the uh, chair audio, so here are the chair audio. All right, so let's bring all of them in. Let's go to SS, go to uh, videos folder, and then let's select the chair paper one to four and the firework video and drop them in. So here we have to create a uh, quad, 
uh, to play the video. So that's exactly the same as uh, what we have done with the people, right, from last class. Um, so here we're going to go to game object, go create a 3D object, create a quad. And we're going to rename this quad as finish. Oh, actually, just say chair paper, be easier. Chair paper one. And we have to rotate it, make it aim to us, right? And scale it up and rotate it, make sure it aligns with the finish line um, banner. And have uh, this scale and bring it back. All right, so now uh, we're going to create material for it first. Uh, you can simply just duplicate the material we have created for the cloud uh, because remember we have applied a specific shader that allows us to key out the green color. So we can just duplicate this material since we already have the settings, right? So here I'm gonna say M uh, chair paper one and then select this to chair paper one uh, material apply it and then select the card we just created which is the finish on paper one and I think I have to bring it up make sure it's above the ground okay and then um, go to is uh, material oh not material here is oh I will have to go to add component and search for video and create a video player and for video player it has the the video clip setting right so we're gonna just drop in the video chair paper one and yeah that's it uh, however we have to select the material chair paper the material we just created, we just applied to it. And remember, in order to correctly key out the green color, we have to select this mask color. We have to select the particular green color. So you're gonna key out that green color once we start to play. So let me save the game and let me test the game and see how it looks. It's already started to play there, see? Okay, um, I think the color is a bit off, it's too greenish. If I look at the original video, it's, yeah, it's red color. So I have not, uh, I think I have to change the, the setting of the material. Uh, I believe here I made a screenshot. Uh, so, uh, yeah, video, chair paper one, material setting. So just copy my setting. So uh, point 28. Point fifteen, is that? Yes. Okay. Point uh, fifteen. So now the counter should display correctly. So I'm gonna just sort of start to play and switch the scenes um, tab, so we don't have to play the game and be able to see it. So I'm gonna just switch the scene once it started. Okay. Yeah. Now the counter looks good. Yeah, that's it. So, um, as you can see, the chair paper two, three, four, they have exactly the same background. See, right? Exactly the same back color background. So that means we can just use the same material, right? Because for the material, the whole purpose is just key out the background color. Since the background color is the same, we can just repeat this material. All right. So we can just select the chair paper one and hit command D, make a duplication and rename it to chair paper two. And for chair paper two, I bring it back a little bit and make it bigger and uh, make sure it's above the ground. Oh, uh, make it bigger. I have to make it bigger on all axis and move it up above the ground. Set it back a little bit. All right, and and then the only thing we have to change is basically the video clip. So this is gonna be the chair paper two, 
okay and then just repeat this now we're gonna have a chair paper three and uh, when you select a chair paper three make sure you replace this uh, video clip uh, and also um, um, put it back and put it at a different location here we go so we have the depth uh, and then make another duplication so this is going to be the chair paper four for chair paper four let's bring it back oh let's bring it back again and make it bigger and put it higher yeah so that's the chair paper uh, and then remember we also have the firework and the firework background color is different so that means we have to create a new material right so we're going to select the chair paper 4 and make a duplication and rename it to fireworks uh, and for the fireworks object we go to its video player and replace the video okay and then we just have to duplicate the material uh, and then rename the material to m fire works and for this material let's change the key color to this green color and uh, i should also has the material setting so see this is a firework material setting so you have to do point 14 and zero so basically i've tested this before we cre uh, i created uh, the video to just save the time and test all of the numbers to get the best result okay um once we have changed the material we have to assign the material to the to the firework right so we have to assign material to the fireworks oh i don't think it's assigned so let's just move the firework board uh backward and then drop the material onto the firework uh and we put it back and make it really big and uh, make sure it's above the ground yes here we go okay then the chair audio okay so we're gonna um we're gonna select the finish line camera because it's better to have the sound created around the camera so we can hear the chair sound in the in the in the best of volume right so we're gonna give game object create an empty object and we're gonna rename it to chair audio one um and let's go to assets go to audio let's bring in the the chair sound one and two okay so select the chair audio one and let's drop in the chair sound one audio clip and let's check off play on a week okay and uh, it's fine to have the 2D because we will not be able to move anyway. So the sound will float um, on top of our camera. So that's the chair audio one. Let's hit command D to make another duplication and rename it to chair audio two. And for chair audio two, we're going to change this audio clip to chair sound two, right? Chair sound two. All right. So now we have all of these assets now we just have to apply this onto the finish line trigger uh, and then the script finish line fireworks okay so here are the chair papers so you just have to sign one by one okay you just have to sign one by one okay and then And then before I get started, uh, let me quickly explain the script, what the function is. So basically, finish the firework. <laughs> okay, so basically, uh, we declare the, this object, the chair paper and fireworks, and also the audio source, which is the chair audio. So when you start the game, the chair paper and the fireworks all been set as false, the set active as false. So you will be disabled in the beginning and once an object enters the trigger and the object uh, has been tagged as a player so that's the car right so you're gonna start this car routine okay so car routine involves time how much time you want to wait before next action so uh as um when you go to this car routine so you're gonna wait for 
five frames, uh, or point zero five seconds. Okay, uh, and then the chair paper one is gonna set as active, right? It's gonna play the first audio, and then wait for point three seconds. It's going to uh, set the chair paper two active. So the chair paper two is gonna show up and play, and the chair audio two is gonna start to play. Uh, and then you wait for 0.4 seconds, and then chair paper three gonna play. Wait for another 0.4 seconds, the uh, chair paper four gonna play. So by doing this, we need the chair paper one, two, three, four to start to play at a different time, so it looks more realistic, all right? So now if I test the play the game, you should see all of those assets is showing up at a different time. Oh, I have to, I have to enter the trigger. Right? You see that? All of them showing up at a different time. But um, you have uh, the the whiteboard. Do you see the flashing white color board? So why that happen is because, okay. Our chair paper, all of these are quartz. So by default, it's a white color, and uh, we have applied a video clip to it. But, uh, the the material setting, the key key color effect, uh, support, uh, need, needs time to be effective to, uh, key out the color. So we will, uh, see a whiteboard shortly before, the green screen, uh, the in effect. Okay. So how can we avoid this stuff? Take a look at this. So if I select the chair paper, right? Uh, even if this object is set as, as active, but I can still hide this object um, by turn off its mesh render, right? So now the chair paper is being activated, but it's uh, the mesh render is checked off, so the, the object is still not showing up. Okay, basically we can use the script to to control this. So once this object is being activated, okay, we wait for, for example, we wait for 0.2 seconds before the mesh render check on, right? So the object is checked on, but the mesh render is checked off in the beginning, so it's not showing up. And the wait for about 0.2 seconds, is the mesh render checked on, the object is fully showing up. And at that time, the whiteboard has already disappeared. So by doing that, we'll uh, eliminate the whiteboard. Okay, so that is when we have the second script check uh, um, uh, kicks in. So that's the finish line firework v2. So if I open that, let me show you. Okay, so the only difference is here is the uh, coral team. As you can see, uh, in the beginning, the chair paper one is activated, right? So now the chair paper one is activated, but this get component is mesh render will not be in enabled until 0.4 seconds been passed. So the object is activated, but its mesh render was disabled, and we have to wait for another 0.4 seconds before its mesh render being enabled. Same thing for the chair paper two, right? The mesh render is being enabled after 2.4 seconds. Uh, you know after the, the object being activated. Okay, so that's it. Um, so what we just have to do is, um, you can either replace the script, um, or somebody just to copy this whole script and, you know, paste it there. Uh, you know what, I'm going to just, I think I'll just uh, import the v2 script into the game. Okay, here we go. Now let's uh, select the finish line trigger again. And let's denate the finish line firework v1, that script. So let's remove component to denate it. And let's go add component again. And let's search. Okay, so here if you, if you search, um, finish line, Firework 2 oh, is out of frame, but here is showing up here. Finish line Firework V2. See, this is a script I, I imported. 
Uh, so now this uh, just a plug in all of those stuff again. So now you should see that whenever, oh, I get it wrong. Okay, whenever the object is activated, it will not show in up because it's mesh render is checked off. Uh, you have to wait for another point four minutes until until it's showing up. Ah, okay, sorry. One, okay, two, okay. So now let's test it. Now, as you can see, that it becomes perfectly. See the fireworks, everything. Um, we only thing we have to do is probably we have just rotate the chair papers that is facing the camera instead of uh, align with the finish line. Okay, so now that's the thing is we just have to select. All of this stuff. Oops. Rotate this way. Facing the camera. Yeah. Facing the camera. Uh, and then fireworks. Facing the camera as well. And uh, maybe a little bit bigger. Alright. So that will work. The last thing we will do for today's lesson is we're going to create the border um, to block our car, to prevent our car from going off road. Okay, so our car will keep stay on the road because we're going to play, uh, we're going to place blocker here. Also, uh, for the target, the target for the air car, remember this guy, we have the box collider turned on. So this sometimes cause a problem. So when our car is running, and once the AR car trigger this ta uh, target showing up, our car, our player may be bumped onto this tree, uh, this uh, target. Okay, so we're going to check off box collider. Okay, check box, uh, check off box collider, uh, and then we're going to start to create uh, the uh, the boundaries. So let's um. Let's bring our car back to the start point. So the start point is here. Okay, let's bring it back. All right, and just to zero out the rotation. So you're gonna face in forward. Oops. Uh, yeah, here. Here. Okay, and then how to create the boundary? So basically, we can just create a cube and turn on for the mesh render and just leave the box collider on, right? Simple. So we're going to create a, sorry, for this, so like the car first, so press F key, focus our view on it, go to game object, 3D object, a cube, and for this cube, we're going to make it very long very tall let's bring it up okay and let's rotate slightly rotate a little bit make sure you only rotate on the uh, red circle so basically that's along y-axis and then let's extend it All right, now let's rename this a uh, cube as track blocker zero one, and let's make a duplication. Um, place it on the other side. Um, yeah, that's good. Um, but we maybe need to scale it down. Go down even more, put it back a little bit. Okay, and for here for the curves, wrong shape, what I'm gonna do is I go to game object and create a 3D object, a cylinder. Okay, a cylinder, and 
for the cinder I'm gonna make it a big okay shrink it down big shrink it down yeah that's good and uh, I'm gonna put it in this corner oh uh, it's still not big enough so I'm gonna make it bigger so don't worry it's blocking the mountain because later on we're going to just turn off its mesh render so nobody will be able to see it yeah here we go <laughs> maybe even even bigger so maybe 400 is that good 400 and 400 okay perfect all right um video center material height okay uh so here we just need to add one more so select this guy and he commanded you to duplicate Okay, so basically you're gonna combine cylinder with the, the 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 cube to block the whole road, inner side and outside. Okay, so I'm going to uh, just skip this part and um, and finish the whole thing, and you can just pause the video and do it your own for two minutes. Okay, and we're gonna continue. All right, um, I finished building the blocker for the whole track. Okay. I combined the, the cube and the, the cylinders. So now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to select the first one uh, and create a game object. And I'm going to say uh, track blocker group and drop everything here. Okay. All the blockers inside of this group to keep everything organized, right? And also, we don't need the mesh render, so check off mesh render and then shrink this group, pack this group. So now, here we go. So the whole track, uh, the boundary have been blocked uh, and is invisible. All right, so next class, we're going to move on to balance and the scenes.